Hello and welcome to another Game Nexus main review. Today we're going to be looking at Final Fight 2. This game was originally released in 1993 on the Super Famicom. And this is what's called the Arcade Bootleg. This is actually a bootleg version released in... I believe it was China. It might have been Japan, but I know there's... There's a writing like Chinese in the beginning. It's basically an arcade board running the Super Nintendo version of the game so they can be played in arcades. The only big difference between this and the actual Super Nintendo version is that in this version you could actually insert as many coins as you want, but in the Super Nintendo version you were limited to how many coins it actually gave you. Now just like the original game, you're given three different characters. There's a uh, Maki here, and then there's Carlos and Hagar from the original game. If you look in the background, there's Chun Li. She looks like she's eating at some sort of restaurant. I really have no idea why it took them three years from the Super Nintendo version to actually release this version, since the games are pretty much identical. And just like in the original game, you have a lot of enemies which look very similar. The only thing I find in this game is it seems like there are less moves, but I guess that's because the Super Nintendo was a bit limited as to how much memory you have in one cartridge as opposed to a full arcade board, which of course would have a lot more memory to go back on. The character designs are actually pretty good in this game. They're a bit different than Final Fight 1. And of course, as you see as I fight the characters, they have various very generic names like they would like Mark and Jack and stuff. The only thing I don't like in this game that I found really weak compared to the original game is these weapons. They're your quick one-hit weapons, whereas in the arcade game, you had these cool weapons that actually did combos and quick stabs and stuff. That's another weird thing. When you do a throw, the weapon more or less just magically disappears. And that guy looked like she, he was actually trying to rape her, which really wasn't too good. Now I'm going to choose Carlos here. He's the actual uh, ninja guy who doesn't have uh, any sword moves. It reminds me of Yoshimitsu from uh, Tekken 3. Or actually any Tekken for that matter, because Yoshimitsu always had a sword on his back and always held it in his... Actually, he always held it in his hand. But there, if I recall correctly, there's only a couple moves where he actually used it. Although, if you want to if you want to uh, have a better comparison, he reminds me more of Kasumi from Dead or Alive, because in Dead or, in Dead or Alive 3, Kasumi always has a sword on her back. But she never actually uses it, which I always found really stupid. But it would have been cool if he just busted out that sword at some point and just sliced up all the enemies. That would have been really fun. And the lame part about this box here is there's only certain moves that'll actually break it because most people hit too high. But I'd imagine if I threw an enemy in, into the box like that, I'd, I would break the box. And there it goes, I actually was able to kick through the box, because I got it at the right angle. Okay, let's take care of this guy here. I still wonder why Cody and Guy didn't make the cut in this game. They could have they could have easily put uh, more characters in this game. I mean, if you look at Final Fight 3 for the Super Nintendo, it had four characters in the game, so it's not like it was a real problem to add more, but maybe back at this time they thought three was enough, or they didn't think they could have more than three. Now here's Hagar, the only returning character from the first game. He looks a little bit different in this game, but he basically handles in the same way that he has very strong moves, but he's just a little bit slow compared to the other characters. And of course he's big and a bit unwieldy with the jumps. Same thing as earlier. You have to get the box in a certain way to actually get it. And that part right there just reminded me of a game called Breakdown on the uh, Xbox. Because in Breakdown on the Xbox, you got your ration bars, and then there were soda machines in the game that you could punch, and then take a soda, and that would actually give you life back. I always called it the life-giving soda. This guy just looks like he has a police baton or something. 
And if you saw pretty quickly on the screen there, there was a guy who actually had two what looked like electrobes. He never actually got to do his move because I didn't let him to electrocute me. And that that chicken that uh, he just picked up was called Barbecue. <laughs> that guy's name was is Atlas. He has a lot of maps in him. And here's a female enemy, which will remind us of the uh, Roxy and Poison characters from the first game. Which, surprisingly enough, never actually made it to any of the home versions. Here's another one of the very generic one-hit weapons. It's kind of nice to have weapons in this game, but as I had said, when I'm playing a beat-em-up game like this, or even like, uh, Guardians, I expect the weapons to actually do, like, maybe one or two hits in a combo, because it just seems slow and boring to have a weapon that just swings very slowly and hits once. Another thing I thought was kind of weird here is there's actually no boss music. The same music just continues. And this guy apparently is called One One. That's a weird name. He has some sort of knife that he's trying to kill you with. Let's see if we could take care of him. And when I first saw this character, she reminded me a lot of my from from uh, King of Fighters and the. Fatal Fury series, but of course she's a blonde and not brunette like Mai. Just her outfit kind of reminds me of Mai, that's really all. That's one thing I hate in beat em up games. Enemy boss characters whose life just changes color. It doesn't uh, drain or anything until you get them really low on life. See, now it's, it's starting to drain, but a cup, it was first blue, then it turned green, then finally it turned yellow and it started draining. And this guy's hits really just take way too much off the life bar. And this is another thing I hate in beat-em-up games. When a character will creep very slowly onto the screen, and you have to wait for him, and then he takes a cheap shot at you like that. I'm just going to use uh, Maki here to uh, destroy him now. Well, basically, that's Fatal Fury 2. It's a great game, a little bit more limited than the first game, but it's definitely worth your time, and I'd highly recommend either this main bootleg or the Super Nice version. So I shall see you later.